Hey everyone, welcome back. It's Tab Sleep Lover, and today we have another Canon of Design quick tips for you. We got Salvador Dali today, and we're going to be going through how he used the dynamic symmetry grid and how you can configure it for your own art. So, this one was requested in the comments below. So, if you have an artist that you'd like to see analyzed, just leave a comment below, and you can also like any artist you see down there, and that'll prioritize it for me. So let's get into this. This is obviously a square composition. But first, we'll talk about the figure ground relationship he's got here. We've got a nice dark figure on a light background. Gives us visual clarity. It's always a necessity in any great art. We've got three dominant diagonals. Very strong, nice visual impact. And they're actually creating a triangle here. A triangular enclosure there. But let's get into the grid. We'll see how he used this square grid. And the square grid is two root four rectangles on top of each other. They're just stacked on top of each other. So here's a root four, root four here, and then a root four here. And then it's got the MAD in place. So there's actually four inside the mother rectangle. One, two, three, four, and then four on the bottom. So he's using this grid, and then we've got the 45 degree angles from the square being used in this grid. Doesn't mean you have to use all these diagonals, but that's what the square grid consists of. Let's see how he's using the grid to organize this composition because this top little arm here or the body whatever it is it's not necessarily locking directly into one of these root 4 diagonals so let's see how he does this we'll first start with these and extend the diagonals of the root 4 grid so we can see this diagonal here is extended and we're gonna look closely at how he's organizing the composition what is he cluing us in on how he used this grid so we've got two areas here once that diagonal is extended let me turn this off so he's incorporating these shadow shapes here and uh, when you use the grid you don't have to necessarily use hard lines like this you can use shadow shapes and it still adheres to the geometry of the grid it's just another way he can organize shadow shapes within his composition so let's take a closer look and down here he's got these shadows lining up to that extended diagonal We've got another extended diagonal coming down here you can see it's coming off that root 4 grid and he's aligning the structure here and he's also got this little peanut looking thing locked into it and then he's also lining up these peanuts and then this shadow shape on this beige structure here so that's how he's extending the diagonals of the square grid now let's see how he's adding lines any intersection of the grid is considered an eye so any of these intersection points right here right here's one here's another one even on the edge anything that matches up to the edge so if you run a line from this eye to this one and it's extended to the edge that creates an eye on the edge there so that's how you can use the grids to fit the needs of your composition so let's see what dolly did so we've got this intersection point here this eye and this eye and he extends the line across and we find the diagonal of that structure up top here okay another one we've got this eye and this eye He's extending it across to the edge, and when the edge intersection point is ran up to this corner here, we can see how the clouds are locking in. You turn this off, you can see how this the part of the structure is locking in here too, right here. The clouds in the middle here, okay, and then the clouds up here, and then you can see how the clouds up here are also paralleling this diagonal, okay? So that's how he's using the added lines on that one, and this is how he's locking in that foot. So we've got this eye running across horizontally hitting the edge of the grid here and then it's running down to this eye and he's able to find the diagonal of that foot okay and then you can see closer this structure right here is paralleling that diagonal if i just grab this and run it down and see how it's paralleling that so that's how we use the dynamic symmetry grid now let's take a look at one more thing that i noticed is this box in the center here the lower center it's creating an unwanted illusion so a lot of these surrealist painters would use gestalt psychology principles to create illusions within their compositions but in this case this is kissing and it's an unwanted illusion because we can't really identify which shape is in front of the other it's confusing the visual clarity and what we've got is really nice visual clarity and then there's some confusion here and last thing you want to do is confuse the viewer so right here if we have to look closer we can see that the shadow of this box is actually further behind and it's further behind this large structure here but 
right now it looks like it's directly under it and it's holding up the structure but that's it's not really easy to identify and you don't want your viewer to be confused like that so let's edit it out and see what it looks like okay so we can see that structure is free now looks a lot more visually clear and if we add it back in we can make it smaller and below the structure just to identify which shape is in front of the other so there's no confusion there now I made some other adjustments so whenever you put a high contrast shape next to another one and you leave a little gap there it can create visual tension in other words it could create a distraction away from the main subject so you just want to be aware of that and right here we've got it's called a gutter it's like an area of high contrast it's just bringing attention to itself kind of standing out because it's surrounded by darks so I made a couple more adjustments just to see what it looked like and open that space up I mean, if we take that box out and there was also an area over here that was overhanging it's in the foreground but it's overhanging on the background and it's the same color so I took that part out we'll see it disappear right here okay and then I open this area up a little bit it's a really bad Photoshop job but when it pulls away you can see how much clearer that area is and this whole structure just pops out a little more so let me turn it on and off and you can see the difference so see how it's kind of jumbled and then it just clears up. So whatever you put in your composition, you wanna be sure you're organizing it and creating visual clarity. If you're adding something in there and it's just muddying the things up and confusing it, making it more noisy, then you're just taking away from the visual pleasure of the composition, okay? You want it to be very visually clear for your viewers. If you don't know how to use design techniques to organize what you're adding into the composition, it's best just to keep it simple. So that's that one. That's Salvador Dali Analyzed. Thank you so much for all the support. I really appreciate it. And be sure to leave a comment below, and I'll get to those and add them to the list. Thank you. Take care, guys. <laughs>